we're going to illustrate experimental designs with a memory question we hope will be relevant to you as students. What's the best time of day to revise for exams? Morning or evening? So let's imagine we're doing an experiment to find out. Here, the independent variable is the time of day the work's done, and the dependent variable is the learning outcome. How well you remember what you were looking at earlier. Well, one way we could do this is with a repeated measures design. Here, all participants do all the conditions, so we'd give them the learning task in the morning and test them in the evening. Then, in a second condition, they'd do a similar task in the evening and be tested next morning. So this would be a really good test of whether time of day influences learning and remembering. But a way we could get round these problems is to use a different design, an independent measures design. So the independent measures design does solve some problems, but it may lead us to others. For example, we'll have different participants doing the same test. Conditioning, conformity, deprivation, aggression, eyewitnesses' memories. These are just some of the things psychologists have studied through laboratory experiments. So what exactly is a laboratory experiment? Well, the aim of an experiment is to go beyond just describing something and actually test out what's causing it. The method is to manipulate something called an independent variable to see if it brings about change in something else called a dependent variable. For example, a common way of trying to isolate the independent variable is by randomly dividing participants into an experimental and a control group, and then only apply the independent variable to the experimental group. And the laboratory is a closed environment, where the influence of other variables can, as far as possible, be kept constant. OK, so field experiments are still about testing the effect of one variable on another. But what's distinctive about them is the context. They're not done in the closed environment of a laboratory. But out in the real world. So why would researchers sacrifice the safety and control of the lab for an environment where they've got a lot less control? First, some research questions just can't be tested in a laboratory setting. Field experiments can also give researchers access to the large numbers needed for some studies. Take Piliarvin and colleagues' field experiments on the bystander effect. From a sample of over 4,000 unwitting participants, the research found that apparently sick or disabled victims were helped 95% of the time. Second, as participants are usually unaware of the experiment, as in Piliarvin's study for example, there's far less likelihood of demand characteristics. Rural North Carolina. Researchers from Duke University were working there on a long-term study of mental health problems in a sample of nearly 1,500 children, about a quarter of whom were from the Cherokee Reservation. In 1996, during the study, the Cherokee Indians in North Carolina's Great Smoky Mountains opened a casino. But this was a casino with a difference. It was different because some of the profits from this casino were distributed equally amongst families on the reservation and this lifted many of them out of poverty. And this was an absolutely fantastic opportunity for the researchers because this new money was independent of anything the families had done for themselves. So it was literally a brand new factor. And this gave the researchers, Jane Costello and her colleagues, a unique chance to test if ending family poverty had any effect on the mental health of the children.